Hey guys, welcome to some adventures. Adventures of Malibu and Dad. Guys, we're at a Tetum Battlefield here in Maryland. Absolutely cool. We just had a great drive uh, through Virginia, down the uh, Parkway, and uh, over the Potomac River uh, in West Virginia. So, uh, so much history, guys. We're just taking in. Come along with us as we check out the Antietam Welcome Center here on the battlefield in Maryland. Come along, guys. We're about to have some fun. We're glad to share the places and the people that we'll meet. Think of the memories we'll have. Exploring hidden history. It's time to hop aboard. On the road with Malibu and Dad. On the road with Malibu and Dad. Guys, when you pull up, you can see the monument. And they have the visitor center here at Antietam National Battlefield in Maryland. Malibu and Mom are on the way. So much history here, guys. We were crossing over the Potomac and all the bridges. It's just uh, amazing. And it's got a history line here. April 12th, 1861, Confederate attacked Fort Sumter. The visitor center is kind of cool. July 21st, 1861, First Battle of Manassas. And the Welcome Center is just amazing. Look at the cannon up there. And man, I'm telling you, what a beautiful day here in beautiful Antietam. We got a uh, monument here. And we're just meeting nice people. Look at all the cannons and everything right there, guys. And Tietum is just amazing. So the Battle of Antietam was uh, September 17th, 1862. Let's go learn more about it. So me and Malibu are walking through Antietam now. She's sniffing the grounds. We're gonna go check out some of the artillery pieces here. The cannons. It's a beautiful monument there they have. She is leading me. She feels like she knows where she's going. All right, guys, so it's a driving tour. So we're going to drive it, and you can go by the numbers. But I just had to come over here and see these uh, real cans here. I love the, uh, the armament. And there's a big monument. Here in Antietam. Amazing place. All right, guys, so here's the six pounder, model 1841. This one here is a 12 pounder, gun howitzer 1857, commonly known as the Napoleon. Here's a three inch ordnance rifle. This is one of the most accurate weapons used here. It was preferred over the heavier 10 pound Patriot. Parrot, which fired the same size ammunition. And this one here, guys, is a 10 pounder Parrot rifle. This cast iron rifle with its band of wrought iron reinforced the breech was a modern weapon of the day. It was effective and moderately long range. The 20 pounder similar except for size was the heaviest rifled cannon used at Antietam. Wow. Back then, man, that was the, uh, the modern firepower of the day. And the barrels were rifled. Oh, they've got it covered up. It's always neat to see all the different pieces they used during the Civil War. I've never seen a smaller one like this. This is kind of cool. It's a beautiful piece. 
1841 out of New Jersey. Really cool. It's like an old battle building there. Start of the tour. And here's the battlefield, guys. Malibu Mom. Just been over by the monument, checking it out. Right, guys we're on stop number one here and this was the focal point right here it's called Dunker's Church that the US Army first came across this is part of the big focal point here I guess this is stop number one on the tour beautiful old church Hard to believe this church was here at the Battle of Antietam. Look at the inside, guys. Beautiful old church. What a wonderful day. It looks like the uh, monument to the Ohio. Uh, 66th and 7th and the 5th Infantry Battalions. Over 100,000 men engaged here in battle, very bloody battle here in Antietam. We're in the uh, cornfield area. This is probably one of the bloodiest sections of the battle. And they call this the Confederate Avenue. some more about the cornfield. You can see the cannon on the other side there. It gives a perspective of all different units and where they were at as the battle uh, sieged on. So guys, this is where the uh, U.S. Army uh, Lieutenant Robert Anderson's uh, 9th Pennsylvania Reserve and this is where the line of the Union Army was here on uh, N. Meade's division. We're at the Joseph uh, Poffenberger Farm. Still here and still well preserved. And here's the uh, 7th Regiment, Pennsylvania Reserve Monument, Volunteer Infantry. Their casualties had 12 killed, 60 wounded, total of 72 in total. You see the cans in the distance here, guys, in the middle of the farm. Here's the 4th Regiment, Pennsylvania Reserve Monument. So the Union Army was along this line here, right outside Antietam. Third Pennsylvania Reserve Corps and 32nd Regiment and Meade's Division. Here's where the 8th Regiment Pennsylvania Reserve Volunteer Corps was. They had the uh, far left battlefield lane.
And guys, this is where the 12th Pennsylvania Cavalry and the 113th of the line 4th Brigade Cavalry Division. And they were on this line here. And here's a monument to uh, Major General Joseph K.F. Mansfield. He was the commander of the 12th Corps of the Army of the Potomac. He was mortally wounded in this spot September 17th, 1862, about 7.35 in the morning while, deploy while deploying his corps, corpse in action. So uh, this is where Joseph Mansfield fell. This is where the 11th Mississippi was, Infantry Regiment of the Laws Brigade, Hood's Division. And this is to the uh, state of Georgia, Georgia's Confederate soldiers. So guys, just past the Miller's Farm, they had the most terrible clash of arms. As Union soldiers stepped out of the cornfield in front of you at dawn, September 17, 1862, Confederate troops aligned in the field just behind you unleashed a horrific volley, the single bloodiest day in American history, and began in earnest. For the next four hours, the cornfield was the center of a storm of lead, iron, flames, and Federal soldiers from 1st and 12th Corps clashes with Lee's men. The cornfield changed hands again and again as both sides attacked and counterattacked, As one soldier remembered, the air seemed full of lead. Missiles, rifles are shot to places and hands and soldiers' canteens and heaven sack pieces of hands and soldiers' canteen haversacks are riddled with bullets and dead and wounded go down in scores. So trying to get this in perspective with a North was uh, to the other side of this field. The south was along this uh, ridge line here. And this is where they clashed in this cornfield. And it just sounded like it was one of the bloodiest uh, battles ever. This is more than 25,000 soldiers clashed, clashed in and around the cornfield. And by 9.30 in the morning, thousands of soldiers lay dead and dying. Confederate General John Bell Hood wrote that it was that here that I witnessed the most terrible clash of arms by far that has occurred during the war. And Union G uh, General Joseph Hooker remembered that every stalk of corn in the northern greater part of the field was cut as closely as it could be done with a knife. And the slain lay in rows precisely as they stood in their ranks. A few moments before, it was never more fortunate to witness more bloody dismell, dismell battlefield. Like there, guys. They just dropped. Seemed like a terrible way to start the Antietam battle. But this is where it started. They talk about a cornfield like no other. So many soldiers died here. This was just the beginning because they moved on across this road into the major battle area. What's really neat is you can walk this entire battlefield area. It reminds me a lot of Gettysburg, just on a lot smaller scale. But uh, being here, I can actually grasp now where the battle line started with the north and where they clashed here with the south along this cornfield. So it's uh, just amazing to be here. Such a beautiful day too. All right guys, so uh, September 17th, this was a Miller's farmhouse here. The Northern units in the army were just to the rear of the Miller farmhouse over this uh, ridge line and hill. And that's the cornfield that the Miller's owned. This is where the first battle begun here in Antietam. And uh, like I said, one of the bloodiest uh, days out here. 
A lot of men fell in that cornfield. Today it seems like it's still an active cornfield. Guys, here in Antietam they talk about the uh, the house that was burned. This was the uh, Mummus farm. And in 1862, um, the Mummus family was here. And this is where their farm was, and their farmhouse. And it was burned down by the Confederate soldiers because they didn't want it being used as a uh, sharpshooter's nest against them. I'll take you over to the cemetery where the Momus are buried, but this is actually uh, part of the battlefield here in Antietam. And here's the entrance to the cemetery, guys. This is very historic. It's also the uh, burial ground for the uh, Orndorff family living on this farm at the time of his death. Major Christian Orndorff II was buried here December of 1797. Some, uh, some of the dates and names. There's a mama name, Samuel Mama in the back. Elizabeth Miller there. You see the farmhouse just over the uh, cemetery wall. Very, very old cemetery. Here at Antietam. Let me show you an overview. Outside Bloody Lane, here, guys. This is where the Ohio Regiment met up with forces. Three hours, three and a half hours they fought in this area. Neither one giving in. Okay, it's an hour. Tower you can go up in, uh, observation tower. <clears throat> it talks about the Irish Brigade here. Very neat uh, monument here to the Irish Brigade. Very well done. Let me get you closer to this. You can see this. It's just beautiful. Look at the uh, workmanship on that. Amazing. Nice monument. We got this beautiful tower. You can go all the way up it. It's called the War Department's Observation Tower. Go all the way up. You can see the whole battlefield from up there. And then Tinum, you've got the uh, battle lines. Talks about uh, the New Jersey battery here. Got a cannon here. And then here's uh, Major General. Looks like Charles Richardson was mortally wounded. Right here, guys. A lot of loss in this field. Talks about the different units. And he was here during this clash. Now he's enjoying 
some time out of the car so you can see and heat them. And so here's the uh, observation tower that was built. And they taught classes out here and uh, did some really cool stuff here for the kids to learn some good history. So guys, during the Battle of Antietam, uh, this bridge was very important. The Confederates held the bridge as long as they could. They were on the lower end. The Union soldiers were on the upper end here on the left. And uh, <clears throat> they finally uh, were repelled and the Union took over the bridge and uh, made the Confederate Army retreat to Strasbourg. But uh, beautiful bridge still here in a very uh, historical uh, position during the war of uh, Antietam, the Battle of Antietam. So beautiful, absolutely beautiful out here, guys. You can see. I like how they have this pointed out here too. Talks about the different generals. How they held the bridge and it talks about the crucial crossing of general namesake and battlefield icons. What's the bridge look like during the battle? It's pretty beat up, but uh, she's still there, guys. Amazing piece of history. Built these very nice walkways. Let's so get down to the bridge. Very nice, beautiful uh, battleground uh, memorial. Just uh, unbelievable. I love the uh, monument there. We're starting to lose a little bit of daylight. I'm trying to get you through the rest of this tour of Antietam. Uh, just beautiful, guys. I can't even express to you what it feels like to be walking through history. And seeing this with my own eyes, you know, you read about it. And uh, just to be here is amazing. You do feel it. I would say next to Gettysburg, this is probably one of the uh, best, biggest, uh, greatest battlefields I've been to. It's so well preserved and well kept. Um, I would say trip here is, you know, the second best thing. Gettysburg's probably the first best thing you could ever go look at. Um, but this is really... Uh, Taking me by surprise, I didn't realize this was so nice and so well done and preserved. Uh, hats off to the uh, Battlefield Trust and all the people involved with keeping history alive, especially, you know, in Battle of Antietam was so important. 1862 battle, I guess both sides thought this was going to be the decider. And little did they both know there was just so much more to go before the Civil War was completed and done with. Coming up on the bridge now. I want to try to capture as much of this for you as I can. Here it is, guys. A lot of what it still looked like back then. It's just beautiful. It's so tranquil here now. It's hard to believe when you visit these battlefields how tranquil they are now. I was just telling my wife it's uh it's beautiful how now people come here to run and enjoy. And there's uh, been life pumped back into these battlefields. And it's good to see that uh, they can be preserved as well as be a uh, part of history forevermore to be learned from. Well, guys, this is a sycamore tree. And it's a witness tree. It was actually here during the battle. Look how beautiful that thing is. It is humongous. Beautiful, beautiful old tree. I love the old witness trees. They could talk, they could tell you so many stories.
All right, guys, this is where the final attack occurred. And uh, you can see it now, it's just beautiful. But this was like the, the, the last one. This is what pushed Burnside out of here. It was because of uh, some Confederate backup that Lee needed. And uh, Burnside almost took it, but uh, he was pushed back and repelled. This is the location where it occurred. This battlefield is a lot bigger than I'd imagined. And it's uh, just been phenomenal. All right, guys, final leg of our journey here to Antietam, to the National Cemetery. And this one here, guys, by far, is probably one of the prettiest I've ever seen. And look at these gates. Absolutely gorgeous. One of the best U.S. National Cemeteries I've ever seen. Well put together. Look at those beautiful monuments. Absolutely amazing, guys. Absolutely an amazing National Cemetery. So well done here at Antietam. And what a beautiful monument. Right in the center here, guys. Look at all the soldiers. So many. See a lot of Maryland graves. That's what the Civil War was all about. These men fighting alongside each other and dying alongside each other for a cause. And here's our final resting place. One of the bloodiest battles of the Civil War. Other than Gettysburg, Antietam was pretty bad, guys. Wow. Beautiful National Cemetery here. Look at this monument. I love it. You can see the uh, moon just above the treetops there on the right. Guys, look at the size of the statue. It must stand about 100 feet tall. It says on the inscription, not for themselves, but for their country. Dedicated both sides. Absolutely beautiful.